Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. If you want to turn with me to Daniel, chapter 6, I'm going to read quite a few verses to begin with. Give you a little background on Daniel. Of course, in Daniel it talks about um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Nebuchadnezzar. And then after Nebuchadnezzar um, was king, was Belshazzar, I believe is the name. Um, and then Belshazzar was slain <coughs> by Darius, or by the Medes, and Darius became the king after that. And this is where we pick up. Daniel had, had served Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, and now he is under Darius. Starting in verse 1, it says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there an error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, that it not be changed, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Now you've got to think about this. The princes and, and the presidents and all these consultants had tricked the king. Had tricked him. They wanted to get at Daniel because Daniel was a Jew and was preferred above all the others. And was to be set above all the others. So they tricked the king. <clears throat> Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree, and every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. This was a law that could not be changed. According to the Medes and Persians, when they, the king made a decree, it could not be changed. Even the king could not change the decree. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, that maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning, and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, 
is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency, innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, I have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man of hurt was found upon him, because he had believed in his God. And I know that's a lot to read. That's a lot to read. And in all honesty, outside of children's Sunday school, we don't hear this account too awful much in church. We hear it alluded to, we hear it talked about, but we don't actually read it in church much. And I, I was asked Thursday night to, to speak this morning. I had nothing, absolutely nothing. We got up yesterday morning, nothing. I just felt completely just hopeless, you know? All day yesterday, thoughts and things went through my head, went through my heart, nothing, nothing was settling. Got up this morning, same thing. I'm going, oh Lord, I'm in a bind here. You gotta help. I had some rumblings on. I was like, no, I don't know. And and God set this in my heart. What He set in my heart was trust. And I I just kept thinking on that and dwelling on that. And one of the things I went and done, of course, what I like to do is go to find the definition of words and trust. And Miriam Webster says, assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. It's a lot like people take trust and hope and kind of put them together. Trust and belief. You know, belief and trust. There's a lot of things that are similar. Um, I know for me, hope is to expect with confidence. Trust is having confidence in someone else or something else. So I got to thinking about that. I'm like, how can I convey trust to people? And Daniel, you know, Shepherd Meshach, and Abednego is one. But Daniel is a perfect example. One man by himself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not only had God, but they had each other. Okay? It's a lot easier to face the enemy when you got someone with you. Okay? But Daniel, on the other hand, Daniel was by himself. He was an Israelite in the midst of Medes and Persians. He had been in captivity, what, 40 some years by this point in time? Yeah, he came over there. He was, you know, brought over when he was a child. He had interpreted dreams for kings. You know, he was set in a high place, but he was still an Israelite. He served his God. He didn't serve the God of the Persians or the Medes or whoever else was in power at that point in time. He's been through three kings by this point. Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and now Darius. Okay? He was by himself for the most part. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been set up in power as well, but it doesn't mention them anywhere in these proceedings. So I picked Daniel out because Daniel had to have a trust in God. He had to have confidence in someone or something else. When Darius was tricked into signing this decree that couldn't be changed, even by him, it had to last the 30 days regardless. He didn't think about what, how that would affect different ones. He loved Daniel. Daniel was going to be set above all the presidents and princes. They didn't like that. So they tricked the king. So Daniel had to be put into the lion's den. If the king didn't do it, you know what would have happened to the king? He would have probably been thrown in the lion's den himself for not following the decree that he put in place. So he had to throw Daniel in the lion's den as much as he didn't want to. Daniel went in there by all accounts alone. It was him and the lions. 
He had to put his faith somewhere. He had to put his trust somewhere. And you know what? King Darius put his trust somewhere too. King Darius told him, he said, your God will deliver you. Yes. And he fasted all night. He didn't believe in Daniel's God before time, but he had seen the works that God had performed Woo! through yes. Daniel. Yes. He had seen the plentifulness that had come forth, the abundance in the land. He knew that there was something about this guy over here and the one that he trusted and whose faith he put his trust in that would do something. And he knew that he would deliver him. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. It's just like us today, you know, we fast and pray, and then when God does it, we just... We're amazed. Was, Darius was relieved and just amazed that, you know, then it was still alive. And that's the way we are today, you know. <coughs> we fast and pray over something, then when God does it, we just... We're in awe. We're in awe. We're mm -hmm. amazed. <coughs> And that's where that's kind of where I'm going with this. We take we take so much for granted sometimes. We take and we say so many times we just it's lip service in a lot of ways. And don't get me wrong, you speak things as if they are, you speak things into existence. Yeah. But so many times we said, I have my faith in God. I put my trust in God. I put my trust that he will supply my needs. And then when you don't have the money to buy the milk or the bread or to put the shoes on the feet, then you're worrying and you're wringing your hands when you've been saying all along, my faith is in God. It's kind of an oxymoron. It is. I want my husband and my daughter to come up here. <laughs> We had a conversation on the way to church before they really knew what I was doing. And the conversation was, I asked Tony, well, I asked Shayla, I said, do you trust your daddy? What's your answer? It depends. <laughs> it depends. <coughs> and I asked Tony, I said, do you trust yourself? Yeah. Well, what else was your answer? I don't know. I said, I need you to do something for me. And I've gotten a response this morning before church. They go, oh, no. And we did it over there before we came over. And, and it worked. But the response was, it depends. The response was, I don't know if I trust myself. How often do we do that? I said, you know what? I said, you're playing right perfectly into what i got to say. Just with the conversation that we had in the car. Yes. And I want you to tell them what you told her in the car. <laughs> Don't cry. I want to cry. Shayla's part of the conversation was, I'm bigger than he is. And this she is. But I point blank told her. I will hurt myself to keep my child safe. Yeah. So, look at me. Exact things that Jesus did. Exact words. 
He hurt himself. He took the stripes on his yes. back. Yes. He took the nails in the palm uh -huh. of his hands and in his feet. Yes. The crown on his neck. He took all that hurt to keep you from getting hurt. I said, it was amazing. The conversation that took place in the car on the way to church was exactly what Jesus had done for us. We have to put our trust in our God, in our Father. Shayla put her trust in her daddy. Even though she didn't want to, even though I made her, she had to have trust there in me to tell her to do it, as well as her dad to complete it. She had to have that trust in herself to be able to do that, to know that she wouldn't get hurt. On the flip side of that, he had to have trust in himself as well. You had to have trust. You had to have confidence in someone or something. We so often today put our confidence in the world, in people who are out here, in people who can't really do anything for us, in the money, just like we talked about in Sunday school, in the wealth, in the fame, the popularity. How many how many celebrities have you seen that it went up and then they bought it down? Because where was their trust? It wasn't up there. It was in what they could get their hands on. And when that ran out, they bought it down. I've got a few scriptures that I just want to share with you. And I pretty much... I, I, pretty much have said all that needs to be said, you know, what God gave me this morning. But there's a few scriptures in it, just a list of them. I don't expect anybody to turn to them, because I'm just going to run through them. But these are scriptures I looked up on the internet when I was studying this this morning. I looked up and trying to quickly find scriptures on trust. And Psalms 9.10 says, And they that know my know thy name, will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Psalms 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices with song, will I praise him. Psalms 31, 14, But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Psalms 52, 8, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Psalms 56, 3, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And that was perfect to go along with what happened here. Shayla was afraid. She didn't want to do it, but she put her trust in her dad. How many times are we afraid? to take that next step forward into what God has for us. And we hold ourselves back from doing what God wants us to do or moving forward in His will because we can't put our trust in Him. When you get afraid, you need to remember that song, that verse, what time I am afraid, I will trust in Thee. Psalms 56, 4, In God I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Isaiah 12, 2. And this is one of my favorite sets of scriptures. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Isaiah 26, 4, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And lastly, 1 Timothy 4, 10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Amen. Amen.